Back again with part two of the best albums from every year I was born, 2002 to 2019. This video is going to be from 2010 to 2019. Um, so yep, yeah, let's just jump right into it. So for 2010, the honorable mentions are Janelle Monae with the Arc Android. This album shows off how incredibly versatile Janelle, Janelle Monae really is with tracks like Cold War, Wonderland, and 57821, being polar opposites to each other and being near the same quality. And then we have Nails with Unsilent Death. This is the absolute best way to spend 14 minutes. Some blistering guitar riffs that are absolutely brutal and unrelenting. And we have Flying Lotus with Cosmogramma. It feels like Flying Lotus really came into his own with this album and it really takes it in stride. The production is very glitchy and at some points quite overwhelming, but it's always just enough to groove to. And the album of the year for 2010 is Joanna Newsom with Have One On Me. Another example of why Joanna Newsom is the greatest songwriter ever. This mammoth of an album is definitely a worthy follow-up to Yes, with the songwriting still being at genius level. The instrumentation, in my opinion, really improved on this album and the emotional peaks do stand out more than ever. Songs like Baby Birch still bring me to tears because of a beautiful voice and the points of lyricism. 2011, the honorable mentions are Fleet Foxes with Helplessness Blues. Although it's quite a safe album, instrumentally speaking, the songwriting really shines in this, with topics um, about the struggles of growing up all over this. And Matana Roberts with Coin Coin Chapter 1. It's very rare that a jazz album will stick in your head for as long as this one does. The avant-garde jazz passages leave me speechless at some points, and her spoken word is absolutely chilling. And then the last honorable mention for 2011 is The Caretakers and Empty Bliss Beyond This World. I'll let a YouTube comment describe this album. It's like a record that's been left playing at a party in a ballroom where everyone has left years ago. Chairs still upright, streamers overhead, empty cups and bottles left lying around, empty dinner plates still at the seats. All coated in a layer of dust and cobwebs, and in the far back corner of the room sits a big old record player with a record that just keeps on turning. Day after day, month after month, year after year, Refusing to accept that her time has passed, hoping desperately that someday people will return to listen to her song once again. A great way to describe it. But the album of the year is not The Caretaker. It is Giles Corey's self-titled. Dan Barrett, the other half of the legendary Have a Nice Life, created this absolute gem of an album, and I think it can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with death consciousness. The production is very lo-fi and is often a kind of looming presence in the song, and it really works well with the passionate and distant vocals. Songs like The Blackest Fire and No One Is Ever Going To Love Me are some of the most gut-wrenching songs ever. 2012, the honorable mentions are Lil Ugly Main with Mr. Thug Isolation. This is a really nice revival of Memphis-style hip-hop. Lil Ugly Main's lyricism on this is also top-notch with uh, Throat and Guns absolutely leading the charge in that department. Then we have Swans with The Seer. This album is one of many albums in the Swans discography that'll leave you speechless and terrified. Then we have Fiona Apple with The Idler Wheel. Another incredible album from an incredibly consistent artist. The Idler Will was probably her most mature album at the time of release, and it shows it through some of the best songwriting of the past 10 years. And the album of the year for 2012 is Death Grips with The Money Store. This is a pretty polarizing album that really pushes the boundaries of what hip hop can be. The production is loud, and from the get go, you know that you're in for an album that will sound like no other. While most people talk about the incredible production, which is deserved praise, Barely anyone talks about MC Wright's incredible lyricism and storytelling, and they just write it off for yelling. This is really a dynamic and hyper album that doesn't sound like anything else out there right now. For 2013, the honorable mentions are Candy Claws, Series, and Calypso in the Deep Time. This album is such a refreshing take on shoegaze that doesn't fall into some of the tropes those albums tend to do. And the tracks are dreamy with the vocals almost meshing into the instrumentals. Then we have Death Heaven with Sunbather. This is a beautiful mesh of black metal with shoegaze and even post-rock. The guitars are soaring and the vocals are just as grimy as other black metal records. And the last honorable mention is Ichiko Aoba with Zero. I couldn't find the English translation to the lyrics, but her beautiful vocals and mesmerizing guitar work is enough for me to love. The album of the year for 2013 is Tim Hecker with Virgins. Tim Hecker does an incredible job at creating these otherworldly landscapes um, they create such a haunting atmosphere around themselves. There's never a dull moment on this, and there's something always happening or changing that you, and you can't keep your attention off it. Some of the songs on here, like Prism, Live Room, and Black Refraction, are some of the most stunning songs of the past decade. 2014, 
The honorable mentions are Freddie Gibbs and Madlib with Pinata. Freddie Gibbs and Madlib have an unprecedented amount of chemistry and they flex their muscles with one of the best hip hop albums of the past 10 years. Then we have Swans with To Be Kind, an absolute mammoth of an album. It goes for just over two hours and not a second is wasted. Every single song is larger than life and Michael Jira's vocals are top notch and so aggressive on every track. And the last honorable mention for 2014 is Sun Kill Moon with Benji. This album is incredibly poetic and emotional that is sure to bring many to tears. Benji really solidified why Mark Kolesdek is one of the greatest songwriters of not only his generation, but of all time. And the album of the year for 2014 is the Masakatsu Takagi album, Kageyaki. This album has some of the most beautiful piano ballads I've ever heard. Songs like Uharu and Utagaki Part 2 really exemplify this with the passion oozing from these songs. The thing I love most about this album is its sincerity. The kind of lo-fi vocals and the perfect piano really make for an experience that feels sincere and welcoming. The whole album is like an enigma. I don't think I've ever heard anything like this album before and even after. The feeling that this album gives you is really hard to recreate. 2015, the honorable mentions are Carly Rae Jepsen with Emotion. This is my personal favourite pop album of the last decade and it still blows me away with every listen. The production is reminiscent of 80s synth pop and her hooks really do stick in your head. Clarence Clarity, No Now. This blew me away uh, when I first listened to it. I mean, the beautifully glitchy production and the melodies he creates still shocks me. And the last honourable mention is Death Grips with The Powers That Be, a completely insane double album from hip-hop's most enigmatic group. It consists of two sides that are respectively more electronic and bombastic and are just as good in quality as the other. Now the album of the year for 2015 is obviously Kendrick Lamar's To Be The Butterfly. I mean, what can I say about this album that hasn't already been said? This is an absolute masterpiece and the peak of hip-hop so far. The production is like modernised 90s jazz rap and Kendrick's nasally vocals really does suit this well. Not only is his storytelling and lyricism top-notch on songs like Wesley's Theory, These Wars and How Much Dollar Cost, but his vocal performances are second to none, with songs like You and Black of the Berry being absolute standouts. This is an incredible album that never fails to leave me speechless. 2016. The honorable mentions are Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds with Skeleton Trees. This is a really, really haunting album with Nick Cave's poetic lyricism being an absolute standout on this. Topics range from Christianity to death and every second is intriguing. This is the type of album that takes multiple listens and reading to um, really understand. Then we have Danny Brown with Atrocity Exhibition. This is a pretty enigmatic hip hop record. The instrumentals are unique and weird and Danny's voice, while it may pull people off, works really well with it in my opinion. And then we have David Bowie with Black Star, the swan song of an incredible artist who died way too soon. This album is deeply sad and holds to be one of Bowie's greatest ever. The lyrics are quite cryptic, but mostly deal with the topic of coming to terms with death. And this is an incredible farewell from an incredible artist. And the album of the year for 2016 is Shoo Shoo Plays the Music of Twin Peaks. Shoo Shoo with this album have managed to take the already um, haunting soundtrack of Twin Peaks and somehow make it even more haunting and terrifying. They do this by adding sort of industrial sounds and the instruments used are much louder than the original. Laura Palmer's theme, Audrey's dance and falling are a lot harsher than the original and to me they make it more enjoy enjoyable than it already was. And the final track, Josie's Past, is without a doubt the most disturbing and heart crushing endings of any album I've ever heard. 2017, the honourable mentions are Mount Erie with A Crow Looked At Me. Um, this album is about death. That's all I say about it. It's a brutal portrayal of death. Big Crit with Forever is a mighty long time. While the track list and the um, length of it might seem a little daunting at first look and never fails to keep my attention. Uh, Standing on the Corner with Red Burns. You want some hip hop instrumentals with some incredible jazz sampling? Red Burns is the one for you. The album of the year for 2017 is Lingua Ignota with All Bitches Die. And how do I even describe the experience of listening to this? The production in an instant can go from beautiful piano ballads and her beautiful yet haunting vocals to some loud and overblown bass hits and her screaming her lungs out. The lyrics are really dark and chilling which really fits with a dark and disturbed aesthetic. I mean most of these songs almost create a spectacle of themselves and they all feel larger than life. For 2018, the honorable mentions are Against All Logic with 2012 to 2017. Nicholas Jar's alter ego, Against All Logic, goes full deep house with this, using samples incredibly well to create these nice grooves. 
Mid-Air Thief with Crumbling, a criminally underrated album that I hadn't discovered up until recently, and I'm so glad that I did. This album is so much fun and a really, really great vibe album. And then we have Daughters, You Won't Get What You Want. This album is so dark and unforgiving that I wouldn't argue with anyone putting this as the album of the year. The production is dark and noisy and the lyrics match the tone of it. An incredible comeback album. The album of the year for 2018 is Earl Sweatshirt with some rap songs. This is really an emotional opus for hip hop music in general. Everything about this album is done perfectly. The instrumentals are very sample based and similar to um, those from Some Collective with Mike Medhane. But he manages to fit himself into that sort of music without sounding like everyone else in that space and finding his own lane. This album really convinced me that Earl is among the best rappers in the world right now and he's only 25. And for 2019, the honourable mentions are Charlie XCX with Charlie, a truly one of a kind pop album that's always a treat to listen to. Charlie's venture with PC music has definitely done wonders for her and she now seems immune to dropping bad music, so listen to it. Then we have JPEG Mafia with All My Heroes at Cornballs. JPEG Mafia is one of hip hop's rising stars and he flexes his creative muscles on this with incredibly unique instrumentals and great lyricism shown throughout. The last honorable mention for 2019 is Tyler the Creator's Igor. This album will forever hold a special place in my heart. This is, in my opinion, Tyler the Creator's peak um, as of right now. His vocals are really nicely awkward and the instruments are so incredibly unique. I mean, his progression from a bastard to ego is incredible. And the album of the year for 2019, The Caretaker with Everywhere at the End of Time. I mean, this is an absolute masterpiece by all accounts. It tells a story without using any vocals, only sound. This really opened my mind into what music can be. The album starts as playful and calming ballroom music and it descends into dark ambient and drone and the transition is immaculate. Truly one of the best albums ever made. I mean, the seven hour runtime is quite intimidating, but it really is worth a listen. And that's it. <sighs> I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to comment any albums that you feel I left out. And I'll make sure to respond to most of them. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and see ya.